I'm sure Me Father too. Joseph will be thrilled to see you. Yeah, excited to see him. I know he just he just went back to Port-au-Prince, um, like the last week, I think, or in the past few days. Yeah, that's what I hear. Good. Yeah. I see. Uh, he's yeah, under, but but I made it safely. Made it yeah. safely. We haven't seen him or heard from him yet, but I see his name up there, so that's a good sign. Yeah, Father Joseph, are you there? Can you hear us? I hope my uh, internet connection will work. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Very good. Cool. Oh, great. Glad to, glad you could make it. I, I understand you made it back to Port-au-Prince. and I was Yes, I'm you... currently in Port-au-Prince in Nazan area. I Very took good. a public bus from Cape Haitian to... How was the journey? Uh oh, he's frozen on my screen. Everybody else too? Yeah, yeah. he froze. When we oh. were getting close to Port of Wins, but otherwise everything went well. Good. We're glad you're safe and sound. Yes, thank you. Good. Well, we're going to get started. Um, I'm always interested to see how many join us. We had, I checked just before, we had 61 registered and I see 23. So I always wonder what happened to those people that registered? <laughs> Um, but we're, we're so glad that those of you who could join us are here tonight. It's, it's always great to gather um, and reconnect with each other. So as we always, let's uh, begin with a word of prayer, if you would. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we pray for peace and provision in Haiti, believing that you are already at work in the midst of the crisis. Surround our Haitian friends and all Haitians with your protection Lord, bless those who are suffering. May they feel the warmth of your presence. We pray for a peaceful handover of governmental authority and restabilization in the country. Lord, strengthen and guide us as we continue to support our friends in the country. Help us to continue reflecting your light in Haiti and all the places of the world that live in darkness. We lift our prayer to you. For what else should we pray? Anybody else want to offer any other prayers? For this and all the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, we offer up to you in the name of the Father, and of the name, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again to so many of you for joining us tonight. It's uh, great to be together. Uh, hopefully it's as beautiful where you are as it is in central Indiana tonight. Um, I'm really excited to, to host our guest from Haiti, and we're going to all pray over his internet connection that it continues to... Wait a minute. I, is he still there? I just looked up and I don't see him up there. He, I don't see his face, but I see his name. Uh, but I want to introduce Father Joseph Philippe. Uh, he's, he's, many of you probably know uh, a lot about his work. He's, he's very well known in Haitian circles. He's a father of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit out of France. And the Holy Spirit has certainly been alive and well in his life and active. And he's, he's been obviously very obedient and has done some amazing things. He, he's the founder of Fancose, the bank that many of you use. To do your banking in Haiti. Uh, he founded the Peasant Association of Fondwa, the Congregation of the Sisters of uh, Antoine of Fondwa, and of the University of Fondwa. Um, just some remarkable accomplishments. And um, he's here to talk to us about his kind of latest work and some perhaps some ways perhaps that our parishes can engage with him and his folks in Haiti. So Father Joseph, just a pleasure to have you and thanks for joining us tonight and look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot, David, and thanks a lot to everybody who is here. And um, uh, Lee Carter would have been with me, but she has a problem. And we are very thankful also to Anne, director of uh, FGN USA, who is traveling in France and cannot join us today. 
And as you, as David said to you, I am uh, a Father Joseph Philip, a member of the Holy Spirit congregation. In the US, they are based at Duquesne University. And, uh, a, uh, and I am a long time friend of uh, Teresa Patterson and I have been, been very grateful for the support that I have received from uh, Pete in my work. You know, that uh, at the beginning we, we uh, work together with Teresa to use uh, the service of Foncosé, you know, for the parish, uh, uh, the twin parish in Haiti. Did uh, it has worked uh, very? Uh, it has worked very well. We used to provide a uh, uh, VP uh, a, a uh, special services to the parish priest, but unfortunately now uh, our, our services are limited. But um, uh, what I want to share with you uh, uh, three things. First, I want um, to share with you where I am now in my work in Haiti for the last uh, 40 years, and also to talk about the LDC. And the most important thing, I would like to, you to do some homework to, to look about LISC, uh, which is um, local support corporation LISC local initiative support corporation uh, in the US it is in every con every country in the US it's funded by the US government everywhere but where I am now it's um, uh, a, as you know I have fun uh, APF the Association of the peasants of Fort in 1988 and uh, a Foncosé, uh, which became the largest microfinance institution in Haiti, which was built in uh, 1994, and then the Sisters of Saint Anthony of Fondroi, and uh, a, and the University of Fondroi in. Ah, so sorry, folks. He froze. Can you hear me? Oh, there you're back now. Yeah, you froze for a moment, Father. Okay, my internet is very is very slow here. <laughs> David, um, uh, ask him um, to uh, not put the video a camera on. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Although we would love to see your face, Father. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sometime I will put it back. Okay, and my main work now is um, to empower economically and spiritually uh, the organized poor in Haiti. And we are trying to do that uh, uh, with FJN, Father Joseph Network. Uh, it, this is a network uh, that we have uh, uh, built uh, in order to help uh, our member institutions to keep uh, their mission, their philosophy, their vision, and also to help uh, uh, our, our colleagues to discover their, their own spirituality, their own legacy while empowering the poor, to transform their lives and teach them to give back. You know, we have uh, a new definition about legacy. It's uh, not property and money that you're leaving uh, behind for your loved ones. It's uh, the continuity of the work that we are doing together to build up God's kingdom. And uh, for us, that's legacy. And for spirituality, Myself, I realized that uh, I have received a lot, you know, from my parents, uh, from my church, uh, from uh, my school, from my country, and from all of you, and PTPA, and uh, from a lot of other friends, you know, and I am obliged to return that to the poor. Uh, that's why, you know, uh, I want my colleague uh, to discover their own spirituality while working with us. Me, uh, especially to discover their motivation to continue to do good and to stay connected with Haiti is, is in spite of the chaos in Haiti. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear now. Thank you. Okay, good, good. And is there any question from what I have said earlier or can I continue? I don't see any questions yet. Go ahead and put something in the chat if you have a question, and I'll be sure to 
to okay. pose that to the father. Yes, thank you. I'm glad to see Andrew is there. Well, <laughs> Andrew, good to see you. Andrew is the international director of the University of Fondois. And Andrew is from Nashville and a good friend of Teresa Vaterson too. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Great to see you, Father. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And our main work now is uh, what we call LDC. In Haiti, it's Local Development Committee. But, uh, you know, it's the replication of LISC. No, because you, we, we don't, in Haiti, we don't want to, uh, to talk uh, m m uh, much about uh, poverty, misery, violence. We want to talk more about existing resources in each community. We're talking about the communal sections. There are 572 uh, in Haiti, and they represent about 75% of the Haitian population. We want uh, to rebuild Haiti one community at a time, to identify existing resources in each community, to keep the resources there, for the development of the community and for the benefit of its population. The way we do that, we identify uh, uh, three development actors in most of the communities. They have, uh, in one given community, you might find uh, probably five or 10 organizations. They talk most of the times about uh, the well being of this community, but they don't work together. You know, for us, uh, our strategy is to put to, uh, to uh, help them to learn how to work together. And we have also the local authority, what we call Kazek and Azek, K-A-Z-E-K, Z-E-K, and uh, Azek, A-Z-E-K, and uh, they are the local authority in the community. And then we have uh, some professionals who come uh, once in a while, uh, you know, like one say, once a quarter or twice a year or once upon a time. But uh, what we are doing is uh, first to create a, 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 lead, a, a committee with uh, those three entities uh, to give them the skills to identify existing problems in their home community and uh, to give them the, the, the problems. And uh, as you know, the of Haiti, they are mainly dealing with uh, uh, food production, farming production, animal production, and small business. And that's why we think uh, that each uh, community needs to have uh, first, they, are, they, they organize themselves to have the LDC committee, which is a network of five, and then to have three specialists working permanently with them, an agronomist, uh, to take care of uh, farming production and uh, a veterinarian doctor to take care of the animal husbandry and uh, a, a business manager to take care of the small businesses. And this is a strategy to enable each community to have uh, a team of three specialists working uh, permanently with them. Currently, we have 35 of them in seven departments uh, of Haiti, including Jeremy Grados, uh, the South, uh, Okai, and Nip. And uh, we have uh, a Southeast, Jacmel, and West, Port-au-Prince, and uh, the Central Plateau, and Gonaïve. We are in seven uh, uh, different places of the country. And, all together, we, are, we have 35. And currently, FGN has received a large grant to work uh, together with uh, the uh, indigenous religious uh, women. They call Akesna. Akesna, it's uh, the uh, association of uh, institute and uh, a religious organization in Haiti. But uh, uh, this is great from the Hilton Foundation, especially to work with the women. It's capacity building and wealth uh, creation. And there are currently 12 uh, uh, LDC where we have uh, uh, Akesna sisters uh, in the country. And uh, a, we will be very happy if we can work together 
with uh, PTPA, you know, to create wealth uh, in uh, rural Haiti and to rebuild the country together. Uh, I'm glad that uh, David uh, is uh, a, an entrepreneur and uh, is very aware about uh, uh, helping people, helping themselves to create uh, job opportunities and small business opportunities, wherever it may happen. But you know, that's what I want to share with you. I don't know if Andrew knows most of the things that I have been talking about. If there is any so, and then we will be open for questions and comments. Andrew, you want to jump in with any? Color commentary? Um, I'm not sure what else to kind of add to what Father Joseph has already said. Looking at some of the comments in the chats, yeah, the LISCs is a you know a U.S. model that mm -hmm. Father Joseph's organizations are kind of trying to replicate in Haiti. So to bring together all these different actors that already exist there, you know, focus on how can we create wealth in this community with what we have. So not you know not um uh the idea is not to be you know dependent on outside sources right it's to create uh, uh sustainable sustainability in that rural section and one of the ways they do it you know he was saying is they send students to the university of fondwa which is a university in haiti and um in the past those students have signed contracts with the university that they have to go back home to the rural community sections to work for a, um for a period of time right because yes. so many educated people in haiti leave their communities once they go to college or maybe they go to you know Port-au-Prince for school and then maybe they they go to other countries so it's a huge you know drain of the the kind of the skills the um energy the initiative that rural Haiti needs so I you know I think it's a great model um uh, it brings together like Father Joseph was saying the locally affected of elected officials that are usually ignored by a lot of NGOs and a lot of international organizations that might be working in some area that they, they're just kind of there and they don't they might not do much right and this is a way to bring them in bring the local elected officials into the development arena as well um yeah yeah thank you andrew and uh, a couple of things i want to share with you first um you know a, it's very expensive to do economic empowerment especially in rural haiti that's why we are very selective you know uh we cannot go to a place to organize a small business and creating jobs for the people where there is no access to water, where there is no access to road or no access uh, to healthcare. The second thing is uh, uh, it's very expensive to do that. That's why now we are trying to educate uh, uh, politicians and government people to include uh, the rural communities into the national budget of Haiti. I'm trying to educate them about looking at uh, the national budget as a large cake of 573 pieces. You know, like uh, if we have 572 uh, communities and uh, the central administration, that means one part, one, one, one part can, can go to uh, each one of the communal section and one part can go to the uh, central administration. It's not to make up a national budget uh, just for the central administration of the country. And you know, it's uh, very uh, unfair to have uh, people living uh, in uh, 2024 who don't have access to water or don't, don't have uh, access to healthcare in their home communities or don't not, do not have a school or a paved road or not a road at all. And the other thing I want to add even in the parish community, we can help uh, the priests uh, uh, to switch uh, from charity to entrepreneurship. You know, like uh, most of the parishes, they have large quantity of land. Most of the time they end up doing nothing. And if they send uh, three students uh, at the University of Fondroy to be educated in uh, agronomy, veterinary and medicine and business management, they can come back, you know, to work uh, with uh, the Father, you froze again. We're happy to see you, but <laughs> we seem to lose your voice when, you, when we see your lovely face. You might try switching off your camera again, Father. 
all the joys of working with Haiti, right, folks? Yes. You know, we <laughs> need a lot of resources in order to make it to make it happen. I I might stop there if you have questions and comments, so that I will have time to respond to your comments and questions. Father, you talked about it, the the expense of it. Can you talk about kind of what the economic commitment would be if a parish wanted to to begin this uh, local development committee in their community? Oh, thank you. And uh, there are about uh, four components in the budget uh, to run this program, but it's a five-year program because the study cycle of a student in agronomy and in veterinary, uh, veterinary medicine is five years. That, that's why, you know, we cannot ask somebody to, to, to pay for one year and forget about the other. And the other thing is we want to train job creators, not job seekers, not unemployed professional. That's why um, a part of the package, uh, it's a package for the students after graduation to open a business, uh, their own salary for one year, which is 25. Father, we lost you again. You, you froze up. Why don't you go ahead? And, we heard you great when your camera was off. Maybe you can try that again. Andrew, I don't know if you know enough about the what students. other... Father, we there you go. We, lo we lost Great the timing. audio again, so you might back up a little bit. Okay. I said that we want to train job, cre job uh, creators. Oh, shoot. Now they just fell out again. I think, though, you know, what it has been in the past and what the brochure has, if there haven't been other changes, it's $25,000 a year was what they asked for. And, and a five-year so, commitment. Five-year commitment. Fifteen thousand. Oh, oh, it's probably given the breakdown. Yeah. What? What you? Know, David, I was going to suggest if you could pull it up. What I see is that it's seventy-five thousand per year for five years, and it, he's got it broken down into four categories. One is for the student tuitions, and that's fifteen thousand. One is for um, the LDC operations, which it gives them what they need to do the work, a motorcycle, an office, a laptop, all that, that's 25,000. Then he's got 10,000 for oversight and management. And then he's got 25,000 for economic development. And exactly. that's, yeah, go ahead. Exactly. Thank you. And that means, David, if you want, you can share the brochure with them because all of the information is there. You know, it's fifteen thousand for the for the students, and uh, twenty five thousand for uh, a of the LDC, and uh, oversight management is ten thousand, and twenty five thousand for economic development. This is mainly for the students, and if you if you multiply multiply twenty five by five, it's one hundred twenty five thousand, which will go to the three students to organize. Uh, a small business in their home community, you know, to create job for themselves and a, for the community. And also their salary is there. Yeah, I, Father, just to be, to clarify, is that per year, you talked about a five-year commitment. I'm a little- Five-year commitment of 75,000 every year. Okay. okay. And it's 3,000, 375,000 for five years for one community. Okay. So obviously, folks, a very significant investment. Yes. And it's for the rebirth and the reconstruction of Haiti. And, you know, to do sustainable economic development, we need large amount of money. And I think if we can write, uh, as David suggested the other time, we can write grants together. You know, and you can have groups, small groups of uh, people in your parish, uh, you know, who are who might be willing to sponsor this project. Like if you have 25 people willing to donate uh, 250 uh, per month during five years, that will cover the cost for one community. And we can go to any community that you want us to get involved in Haiti. But uh, before going that, we want to make 
Darn it. He was on a roll there. He, he may have mentioned it earlier. He was kind of cutting in, but they he, they did get a grant through the Hilton Foundation that's funded the sisters that have been the ones kind of implementing the program so far. So he and I talked about perhaps kind of going together with some of you parishes who might be interested. Can, can you in hear now? Oh, there you're back. Go ahead. Ah. As quick as he was there, he was gone again. Father, can you hear us now? Shoot. Sorry for the bad internet connection. Go ahead and try again, Father. In questions or comments? Ah. Hello? Any questions or comments? Do you keep cutting in and out? Are you back there, Father? Okay. Okay, sorry. The last thing I was saying, uh, it's regarding a parish group which might be appointed, you know, a group of 25 uh, where everybody, uh, each member can donate uh, 250 per month during five years, and that will make it. That will help the parish to sponsor one community to manage this program. Right. You know, I was mentioning, Father, that we've, you and I talked about possibly looking to some large grantors because this really has the potential. And I think with the attention that's being paid to Haiti and the understanding that there's going to be need to be significant attention and investment paid to the country as hopefully mm -hmm. a, a, a solid government gets in place, God willing, soon, that... Um, there's going to be some investors that will be interested in a project like this because it, it truly, as you could imagine, you kind of envision as he described it, it could be really transformative to the country when you can be, can go into these rural communities that many of us operate in and think about beginning to create some enterprise and, and some ownership of the of the community along with the educational component, which is so critical. Um, there, there really can be significant change and kind of create some of the sustainability that some of us really seek to to be able to provide in the country. Uh, questions, comments so far? I'm, I'm not sure if Father's hearing us or not. So, and the, if and I put in the chat, if you didn't see the brochure, and it's it's pretty um, pretty explanatory. It's it's yes. it's in the invite. They put a link in the invitation to tonight's Zoom meeting, so that you should be able to find a link to it. And I'll follow up with the recording of the Zoom with another copy of it, another um, attachment with 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 the brochure, so you can take a look at that. But you know, I was I was th thinking about the, this time when we're not able to be as active as we want to as parishes in the U.S. in Haiti. Um, that this gives us an opportunity to look like a look at a. a a prospect like this and and figure out a way to 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 prepare ourselves for an investment of this size that can be just very significant in terms of the impact it could have in the country so it gives us that that chance to take a pause and say let's let's really consider something significant like this um and know that you're in, in this case working with an organization that knows what they're doing i mean obviously father has is is very well proven in what he's been, his ability to get things done and manage everything he's done in Haiti. I, I learned when I first met him is that has been modeled after something he's learned in the United States. I didn't even know till tonight he modeled it after this LISC, which mm -hmm. I put the website too if you're interested. They, those do exist in our communities. There's one here in Indianapolis where I reside. He's modeled after that. The bank and fund was modeled after banking in the U.S. So um, he's done a lot of time studying what works. Father, are you with us now? Can you hear us? Yes, I am. I, I have heard everything that you have said. Oh, good. 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 Do anything you need to correct that I said wrong? No, 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 no. You're correct. You're correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Anything else you want to add, Father? Uh, but uh, the only thing uh, I can add, we need to uh, we focus uh, uh, on our own spirituality. What is our motivation? to stay connected uh, with Haiti. You know, what is our, our legacy? And I think by doing this work with PT, PTPA, 
it's a good way to find out your personal legacy. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of things uh, that uh, we can uh, do together to rebuild uh, Haiti. Uh, you know, the Presidential Council has been uh, invested. Uh, I, I mean, uh, they have been inaugurated today, but we don't know what, what's going to happen with that. Uh, for me, I, not, I don't support them, but it's better if they can fight uh, uh, the insecurity situation in the country. You know, but uh, my my reading my reading of the of uh, the situation of Haiti now is where is God in Haiti today? Mm. Uh, uh, a crying out for help for her children, who has been uh, uh, devastated. You know, I go to the story of Moses. You know, one you know Moses has has killed uh, an Egyptian before being chosen by God. And you heard also the story of Cyrus uh, who defended the Israelite people when they were in exile. And you have the story, the story of uh, a Matthew who was a publican. You have the story also of Zacchaeus who was another tax collector. But for me, I am watching God's presence in our midst today, how God wants to respond to the Haitian cry of today, hmm. you know? And for me, that's why uh, even this guy of uh, uh, from the South, uh, Guy Philippe, uh, I don't, re I don't reject, him, reject him myself because I'm doing all of those type of... The problem of Haiti. But, uh, you know, we, we are, one of the things that I want to share with you, Haiti doesn't need food, even though the people are hungry. We don't need food from outside, from the U.S. We want, if you, if you have food, you want to help people who are hungry, help your parish in Haiti to buy food from the farmers in your home community so that they can share this food with the people living in your home community and help the people to produce, to become more a, a good farmers. You know, they can produce more food and more, a, they can raise more animals. But please don't ask people, other people to send food to your parish. Haiti doesn't need food now. We need local food uh, produced in Haiti by the Haitian people. You know, that's the challenge for today. And as you know, today, Haiti has learned that we have a lot of nat natural resources uh, under the soil. That's why uh, they, they keep uh, us uh, fighting among ourselves, you know, to get access to, the, to those uh, mineral resources. But unfortunately, we are where we are. But it's very important for us to know that you are with us in this struggle. Mm. Because, you know, you, you have made already a... a a huge different difference. Myself, I am a I, I am a, a big uh, uh, beneficiary of PTPA. You know, Teresa has helped me a lot in my work. He, he, she has twinned my my work with Fimcog, First United Methodist Church, because we didn't have a parish which wanted to be twin with a peasant association. But Fimcog, the Methodist Church, you know, they like that and they enjoy it as as of today. A priest in Haiti, you know. Now we're losing you again, Father. You cut out. All right. Anybody want to react to what Father is saying? Feel free to chime in. Well, he hopefully regains his internet connection. Can you hear? Ah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. What I was saying, uh, there, I know that uh, Foncose has uh, his uh, license from the central bank last year. I mean, in 2021, that has made uh, uh, a Foncose to be more compliant, you know, in uh, a, uh, the regulators, banking regulators in the country. But uh, in that sense, um, 
a, some of you might have not been pleased with the services that you have received. I mean, the, your parish uh, containers, but uh, counterparts in Haiti, but um, I can give you again this number, but uh, David has it. It's uh, 37 five oh five three no, excuse me thirty seven oh one five three seven zero it's mr alexander Hector. he's the deputy director of Francoze. if you if your parish priest has any problem you can call him he will be very pleased to help you mr alexander Hector, like alexander thirty seven zero one five three seven zero just put that number in the chat too. And I've talked to Mr. Alexander and he's been very helpful. I know a lot of you have had struggles with Juan Jose and I understand. And it's just been a delay. I always tell people money. I haven't had one case of money getting lost or mm -hmm. misappropriated. It doesn't happen, but um, sometimes it is slow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. A any other questions? Or Father, and I was just going to say that our many of our parishes obviously haven't been able to visit, and so much of parish twinning is about having a face-to-face -face relationship. And we had the pandemic followed by the unrest now, so most of our parishes have, haven't visited for five years. What would you Ooh. offer in terms of kind of encouragement for us to continue? Even then, you know, it's, it's been it's been a really difficult time for our parish twinning relationships. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know, in we in Port au Prince, uh, we 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 have uh, transportation service. You know, if uh, the, the parish uh, member um, finding a decent place to stay in Port au Prince and transportation, you know, to to assist you. You know, and especially, you know, we are working with uh, the native uh, religious uh, women here. Most of them, they are houses also in the Port-au-Prince area where we they can host. And if you want to learn a little bit about what we are doing with uh, the uh, Akesna sisters, the native religious women, uh, as I said, is uh, capacity building and spirituality. You know, like uh, I, I have heard, I, I have hired the Jesuits to do spiritual training for them, but the Jesuits thought that they have to learn uh, certain Yashu spirituality. But I said that this is a good spirituality, but this is not what we want. We want the sisters to learn about their own charism and their own spirituality and to have a, a written document about their spirituality. Like we have uh, Father Panez, who was the, uh, the, Haitian, the first Haitian who, who has founded a religious order in Haiti for women and men. You know, in uh, 1960, uh, uh, I think, um, yeah, but um, you know we need we are we 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 are helping the sisters to collect information about his own spirituality, and uh, uh, to see how the community has developed uh, their charism, and we help uh, the community also um, to have a a document uh, a written document about their religious life, the 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 their formation program. Their, form, their formation program for their religious uh, community, you know, to, to have it uh, written, and also to uh, overview their connection with the archdiocese, you know, to make sure that they are legally registered uh, uh, in uh, the diocese. And we give each community an accountant so that uh, they can uh, provide good uh, accounting report, you know, to uh, to us uh, for the project. This is one of the challenges to make sure that uh, we we have uh, to provide good reporting and in order to secure the report, we uh, in the project, we have a line to help uh, each community to hire an accountant uh, you know, which we, who can collect uh, the information and help us uh, to write the report for the project. And uh, so far, you know, we are doing pretty well. 
especially because the project is mainly in the countryside of Haiti. It's wonderful to know that good things are still happening in the midst of all the chaos there. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And we do have another project we might want to share with you, and uh, is to have a donated property in the Miami area uh, to organize a guest house for the sisters when they travel to the to the U.S. and when they need they are looking for a place to stay for one or two nights, or if they are coming uh, to do pastoral ministry or to attend the seminars, and also to uh, collect. Uh, uh, Andrew, you had your hand up. Why don't you jump in while we're, he's reconnecting? It wasn't. It wasn't about that. I don't. Oh. <laughs> so, see if Father Joseph finishes. Okay. Comes back on. I was. I was going to talk a little bit about. Um. You know, really fast. I don't know how we're doing on time, honestly. But um. We're doing okay. We're all right. Uh. Yeah. It, about then uh, a little bit about how uh you know the LDCs worked with the University of Fondwa, so um you know as you mentioned I work with the University of Fondwa. I was on the ground in Haiti for from 2018 to 2021. I'm in Santo Domingo now, and when I was at the University of Fondwa, you know um it's the only rural university in Haiti, and the kids coming from these LDCs you know don't have access to any university, um very rural areas. I'm sure you're very familiar with that in the parishes where you all work. Um, but all the all the universities are concentrated in um Port au Prince. In, you know in Port-au-Prince or in other big cities. And uh and I mean these students that come to the University of Fondwa from these LDCs are like our best students, right? Because they um these are like the three best students. They pass the exams from uh they, they pass an exam to to win the scholarships to be one of the students chosen by the LDC to be uh, on scholarship at the University of Fondwa. And and so it's 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 amazing to see these very talented, intelligent students who probably would never have been able to go to the university, right? Or if they did go to university, it's going to be in Port-au-Prince, and they're probably going to end up staying in Port-au-Prince, working for an NGO. Um, not that there's anything wrong with working for NGOs, but you know, but never going back to like their home community to try to create activity, to try to create something that keeps people there. So you know, it's it's a model that I'm really passionate about. I think. Um, has a lot of potential um, to to create the kind of local sustainable um, development that we really want to see in Haiti, right? And um, I love what Father Joseph is talking about about you know local food uh, production too. You know we talk about food security, sending food to Haiti, and that's fine. But um, really, what's more sustainable? You know, you hear people talk about food sovereignty today, the ability to produce your own food. Um, 50 percent of Haitians work in agriculture or live in rural areas and many of them work in agriculture right so that's their that's their production that's how they make money that's how they make a living um so extremely you know extremely important yeah just a yeah. few other comments uh, uh, Andrew, would you share with them about the story of Monsanto a graduate from uh, the University of Fondwa and also the virtual tour if you know anything about those two, you can you might share them with that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so Masanto is one of our best, you know, our, our favorite alumni to talk about. Um, I don't know if he he wasn't an LDC student though. Um, but he yeah. came from a he came from a rural community yes, very far away. I think it's um, it might it might be somebody who has connection with PTPA who has helped him to to okay. to, to, to finance his education. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so he came, he came from a rural community, you know, far away in the north of Port-au-Prince and Fond was in the south of Port-au-Prince. Yeah, in Pignon. Mm -hmm. In Pignon. And, um, and he came and studied veterinary medicine at the University of Fond, which, which the University of Fond was the only, uh, veterinary school in Haiti. Um, there are other veterinary programs in Haiti, but they're agronomy programs where people specialize in like livestock, um, but no other veterinary science and productions. And you know where people's entire investment can be saved in a pig or a cow that they bought, right? Veterinary you know, medicine is extremely important um, to protect the livelihood of these people. I mean, people will buy you know, a calf 
to save up money to sell later on so their kid can go to school, right? It's like a bank account. So um, veterinary medicine is extremely important. And so Mosena was a veterinary student and he really did live out like the mission of the University of Fondo, right? So he was not on any sort of contract to go back to his home community, but after finishing his studies at the University of Fondo, he did go back to his rural community where he's been extremely successful. He has a, uh, he has a, a veterinary clinic but he also has a commercial farm. Um, he also has a restaurant, and he's also uh, he's also served as on the as one of the local elected officials in Pinyon um, before as well. So very active in the community. You know, involved in not just you know not being not working for somebody, but involved in creating jobs. So he hires people, he employs people, and that's the kind of creation that you know. We love to talk about that's the entire mission. That's the entire, you know, goal goal of uh of of creating economic activity, wealth creation. So Musanto is yeah definitely an, an amazing success story. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything, Father uh, Joseph. No, I want you to show them the tour, virtual tour. Ah, uh, yeah, the virtual mm -hmm. tour. Yeah, the University of Fondua too. Yeah, so we have um a new thing. It's called the virtual tour. Um, maybe David, we can talk about setting this up. It's a, uh, a 30 minute zoom call, um, where we present the university of Fondwa students and professors there talk to, you know, whoever's in the tour, um, to give, to give kind of an experience of getting close to the university, university of Fondwa when it's, um, when, when, you know, people in the U S can't go to Haiti easily. Right. Oh, it, that's at all now. <laughs> yeah, it was you can't come to Haiti usually now it's you can't go pretty much at all um you know it might be a good way for PTPA to uh you know uh have people in their parishes uh a model for people to connect people in their parishes to Haiti too in this time right um mm -hmm. uh but it's it's a it's a new thing we just started doing with the University of Fondo so we only had like five of them but um maybe that's something we can talk about David I think that it, it could be really cool for anybody in PTBA who wants to learn more about the University of Fondwa, which is obviously a big part of the LDC program. Mm -hmm. um, and it might also be the virtual tours could also be a model that maybe parishes want to use to better connect their parishioners to their parish in Haiti, their twin parish in Haiti. And this time that you can't, you know, there's no way, way to go phys to go physically. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So those, those of you on the call can probably understand why we're adding Andrew to the board of directors of PTPA because he has fabulous <laughs> ideas. So he yeah. could be joining us soon. <laughs> yes, that's good. Yeah. He's, he's a hard worker. Sad yeah. to help. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Not seeing any. So, Philippe, yes, I just want to thank you for doing this. Um, mm -hmm. I, you and I have never met in person, but I know you well just based thank on you. the history of the great work that you do. And you. it's it's good to see your face. I hope to meet you in person someday. And thank I you. just want to thank you for doing this tonight. Thank you for being an inspiration to all of us, because this is the kind of thing that we all strive to do. Um, obviously, some of us don't know how to do it. So it, it's great to have someone that's got this kind of experience sharing all this, this wisdom. So thank you very much. Father, you muted yourself somehow there in the process. And there you go. Together, we can build up God's kingdom and make of this world a better place for God's children. Mm -hmm. And you know also what we have been doing in Haiti, you can do it everywhere. They are poor people. First, you know, you need to, like you are living in a poor neighborhood, you can divide it in uh, various blocks, various sec section, and uh, have a gathering with the people and ask them, uh, invite them for a meal and invite them to name the problems of the neighborhood. Uh, that means you, get, you help them to get organized and find out uh, the most educated uh, people around in the midst of them to give them opportunities to serve. You know, how to uh, send the, the young, uh, the, the high school graduates to university, to colleges, and then to have a commitment to come back and to work with you. And the, the other thing is uh, 
uh, economic uh, initiatives, you know, to create uh, small businesses. And as you know, there is a SBDC, Small Business Development Center, all over the U.S. that can help uh, the small business owners, you know, to uh, to to manage better their businesses. That it's a, it's three things, you know, get get the poor organized, access to higher education, and economic empowerment. Thank you, Father. Uh, Laura, you have a question for Father. Yes, thank you. Yes, I get a question for Father um, Joseph because um, we are working in Jeremy Grandos and I'm wondering if we can have like um, some contact with the LTC they got back there mm -hmm. because I, I think they, they knew us, they know us because we was um, in mm -hmm. Jeremy like for 10 years or more, but okay. I don't know. I don't know yeah, in in, in uh, Jeremy, we are in uh, Leon, Hot okay. Gold Yes, Hot 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 Hot. yes. I, I guess. But yeah. do you have any contact you can share yeah, with Yeah, you us? can send me a note. You know, my uh, contact information is there. Yes. Or they can help you get it. And I will oh, put you in you. touch with uh, uh, the director of our program. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome. You'll have Father Joseph's email address. I forgot if I shared that with you. I'm going to try to find it here and put it in the he, chat. I think he did put it in the chat. Um, oh, a he did? Further up. Um, and, and Kate has her hand up, David. I'm not sure if he saw. Okay. Oh, I didn't see that. Thanks. Go ahead, Kate. Father, I remember reading about the Three Legs program and mm -hmm. about uh, under Fon Jose on the website, there was a, a way to work with your local Fon Jose office to have uh, people go out to your village and work on entrepreneurship and managerial skills. Mm -hmm. Is that still continuing or... Uh no, unfortunately, we have uh, a bad experience with, with some people who wanted to copy, to replicate with uh, all uh, things without our authorization, and they didn't do it well, and we just left them behind. So now you're focusing on the LDC as a way. LDC. It has been always LDC, but they try, they try to change the name. You know, and the focus, they call it three legs. And for us, it's not three legs. It's LDC, okay. the model of LISC. Okay, thank you. Thank you, too. Okay. Anyone else have a question or comment? And we do we do have an office in the US, FJN USA. David, probably you can share with them the contact information of uh, Dr. Anne Pitrov, who is the head of uh, FJN USA. And you can you can call her anytime. She's traveling to France for a few days, but she will be back uh, in uh, two weeks. Yeah, I'll share that information when I follow up with the, the recording to the Zoom. Her name is Ann Petra, P-E-T-R-O-V. And Ann has uh, been hired. She lives here in the States now, um, but she's she's the U.S. employee. So she's um, I, I'm, I'm sure she's going to want to follow up with our members, too, just to to keep you informed of what's possible. And um, if you, you have some interest, you know, feel free to reach out to me uh, and, you know, we can we can begin to, you know, think creatively, too, about a grant proposal, because I know it's going to be considerable funding. But uh, as I said, I think it, there are some funders out there that would be interested in projects like this. And Andrew, is your hand up or is it just a leftover hand up? There we go. <laughs> yes, it is. I think, um, Kate, for your question, um, uh, I think you were asking about if Fonco Zay is supporting small businesses and making investments, too. Was that yeah. Um, so I think Father Joseph, you can correct me because he he heard the the thing about the 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 three legs and he clarified that. But Fon Jose does do different uh, investment programs, but yes, um, you know they're right. they're very they're very specific. And Father Joseph yeah. can clarify. But in a lot of cases, it's just for like groups of women that are mm -hmm. that are you know merchant women. Um, so it's very effective at what it does, but it's not 
always, you know, it, it can't help with every kind of problem. And the LDCs are a more general solution. Um, but Funko's, is, yeah, there's they still do like small business loans. Um, yes, yes, Funko's does. And Funko's, its web, website, it's funko's.org. You can get all of the information. F O N K O Z E dot org. Excellent. Very good. Great. Father, I'm going to just echo what Diane said and thanking you for joining us tonight and sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, your um, love for Haiti. We're it's it's just encouraging to talk with you and hear from you and hear about all the great work that continues in spite of all the challenges. It is it truly is is a sign of um, God's presence continuing to to shine on Haiti. And we we join you and all the people of Haiti in praying for an end to the violence and to a return to something that's never even been seen in Haiti, a, a new rebirth that's just um, just glorious and we we we're, we all stand ready to to be a part of that resurrection of the country and look forward to working with you and others and together for the future of haiti God thank bless. you very thank you very much one more thing you know please continue to do what you have been doing for your parish because the pastors they really need your help for doing what you're doing and if you think about uh getting involved with what we talk about tonight it's a new program because most of the times, the help that you have provided to your parish priest, it's helped them to, to have something that they can rely on. Even myself, I was in a parish, I was going hungry because uh, the people could not feed their priests. But, you know, by receiving some help from another sister parish that has helped. You know, please continue. We don't, what we have shared with you is not to, to discontinue, to encourage you to discontinue to do what you have been doing. It's to do more, to do more, to help us to, re, uh, to work for the rebirth and the reconstruction of the country. Because, you know, when you have a money, a, a Sunday money collection, you may not have the money to buy some sugar, uh, uh, to, to, have, to have a coffee, you know, <laughs> uh, not talking about to buy gas for your car. You know, because the people uh, are very poor in that sense. That's why we want to focus on job creations to empower the people so that they can they can have a job to cover to pay. You know, to cover even the to contribute in the church in the building of the church of their community. But you know, we have a lot to do together. Thank you for the encouragement, so Father. And keep praying for us because you know we are we are fighting with the, with the devil here. Yeah, and, and and on that note, Father, would you be willing to offer us your blessing as we part for the night? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's take a, a few seconds of silence. God, we thank you for calling us uh, to be your witnesses, to be a living gospel for those who are around us and to be sign of life for those who are despaired and for those who are discouraged and help us to be peacemakers and peace bridges, build bridges wherever we may be and help us to rebuild uh, this country and continue to help uh, uh, PTPA and especially its leadership, uh, uh, David and uh, his colleague. We pray in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and I look forward to, to talking with you and seeing you next month. Thank you. God bless, okay. everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Take care.